idea we're traveling up to Shotley Bridge Hospital um, I have an appointment with the oncologist and hematologist about the uh, CML which is the chronic myeloid leukemia um, it is just a, a another checkup just to get some more bloods taken uh, find out what the results were from the last bloods that were taken um, so yeah it's uh, along to Shotley Bridge Hospital which is quite good we're normally at Shotley Bridge or Durham University Hospital um, Durham University Hospital is literally five minutes away from the house and Shotley Bridge is about 15 minutes so not too far um, so yeah catch up with you in a little bit and uh, see how things go See, obviously I've got that rash that I have on my stomach all the time. Yeah. Breathlessness, fatigue still. I still get cramps but they're a lot better than what they were. Um, obviously I'm going to tell them your mess is progressing. Yeah. That's just it. And all your hair's falling out again. Right, and I've, uh, hell of, I know I've mentioned this from before, where it was like, every time I come and see him, it was like when I was on that other drug that I'm at and yeah. I'd be telling them like about the cramps and stuff. And he just sort of like fobbed them off as though like he's never heard of that before. Or it was like Yeah, but you you're a bit unique, aren't you? With having no, but, uh, two things together that they've never heard of being well what, three in the world's got them together. Yeah. But and he's probably just making notes for the future for other people as well. You know I mean, obviously I I had to come off my it because of them cramps. It was uh it literally kept the crunch on. I said I'd rather have the, the leukemia than the cramps. That's how bad they were. And then obviously changed us on. Uh, I know, but he did say that they thought they knew everything about leukemia and about everything else, and then they've discovered with you they don't know everything because yours is complicated with the MS. So, anyway, they're still looking into the treatments and things, and you know, although the people who had it years ago, went on the treatment, uh, the, the new treatment to try it out, is why you're still here. There's a the hospital, see if we can get parked. Yeah, okay. I've oh, got across that other car park, there's canny way down, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Rockin', come on. In. You good boy. Yeah. I actually, when I asked him for the results. I you were on about the last ones, weren't you? Yeah, I wasn't yeah. bothered about these ones. I've so got... they're the latest ones? Yeah, so these are the today's. Good.
So hi, um, <coughs> obviously back home now, um, after being in the hospital to get checked up for the um, you know, leukaemia checks and everything. Um, just for those that don't um, know or are new to the channel, um, I was diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukaemia in 2017. Um, I was put on a drug called um, imatinib, which is Gleevec. I think in the States. Um, I was on that for maybe um, five years, five and a half years, um, and had to come off because of the side effects of the cramp. Um, cramps were really, really bad, um, debilitating to the point where I couldn't move for days afterwards and stuff like that. So, um, says to the hematologist I'd rather have the leukaemia than the cramps um, at which point he changed me over onto nilotinib which is uh, to Cigna I think uh, in other countries um, obviously you've been on to Cigna now for almost two years I'm guessing um, the symptoms is a lot but sorry not symptoms the side effects are a lot better um, so I still get cramp but they are very easy to stretch out um, so don't really bother me too much um, I can live with with them side effects um, obviously other side effects I've got um, just to clarify as well I also have um, primary progressive multiple sclerosis as well um, so I'm on I also have cervical spondylosis as well so I'm actually on quite a few medications so trying to pinpoint side effects from which medication sometimes gets a little bit awkward and a bit crossed. Um, so obviously I've went in there today and I've, I've spoke with uh, Dr. Iqbal, fantastic um, hematologist. He's, he's been great right from the, from the start. Really nice guy. Um, <clears throat> obviously I've explained today uh, the side effects that I've got at the moment. Not 100% sure whether these are from the leukaemia drugs that I'm taking or whether it's a combination of everything else. Um, but I have um, a rush, constant rush, all over like me, my chest, my stomach, um, just red spots. Um, they don't itch, they don't bother me one bit. It is just spots, um, which is really strange. Um, another one I get is uh, hair loss, but it's not, not this. This was me um, carrying out a bad self-shave the other day. Um, but the hair loss that I get is actually uh, my body, so me, um, I used to have a hairy chest, I haven't now, but three weeks time I'll have a hairy chest. So it's mad, so it's, it tends to run in like a three week cycle for me, so I've normally got a hairy chest, I've normally got a bit of a hairy back, I've got hairy arms and hairy legs. Um, the private bit's still fine, head's still fine, beard's still fine everywhere else, including half of each one of my eyebrows, I keep losing the hair. And then, so this happens, as I said, about three week cycle. So I'll lose the hair, then over the next three weeks, it'll grow back. And then all of a sudden I'll start to lose it again over the course of a couple of days. Um, so strange, so weird. Um, obviously he's speaking to uh, the hematologist today, he's, hasn't known any other cases like that um, so as I say it could be just a combination of the other medications that I'm taking and stuff so anyway obviously went for that appointment today um, every time I go for an appointment obviously they take um, a ton of blood um, and then they do the testing just to check what your levels are and see if you're level enough now I've never from the start my levels have never been really low. I've always stayed higher than they would like to see. Um, but the way they see it is that I'm managing, I'm fine, I'm still alive, so it's working. So I've, I haven't gone into remission on this um, and it doesn't look like I'm going to. I've still got quite sort of medium sort of levels. So I did actually ask them for a print off of the, uh, the results. Uh, from my last one. There was a little bit of a mix-up in what I was trying to say. I actually wanted the results from 
the last blood test, but he got a little bit confused and he ended up taking me bloods, rushing all the tests through and giving us the results from the days. So probably a bit more of a bonus, I'm guessing. So, I mean, a lot of these don't mean a great deal to me. As I say, I'm still here. That's enough for me. Um, obviously, we've got uh, white blood cells. Um, so the normal range is between four, um, well, 4.0 and 11.0. Mine's currently sitting at 9.15. Red blood cells, normal range is between 4.3 and 5.8. Mine's sitting at 5.6. Uh, HGB haemoglobin, potentially I'm guessing. Um, normal range 134 to 167, mine's 174. HCT, uh, normal range uh, 0.39 to 0.49, mine's 0.50. Uh, MCV, normal range uh, 80.0 to 97.0. Mine is 90.5, so sort of in the middle-ish. MCH, um, normal range 26.5 to 33.0, mine's 31. MCHC, uh, normal range 320 to 360, yeah, I'm sitting outright 343. Uh, RDC, uh, CV, so normal range 12 to 18, mine's 15. Um, so yeah, um, I don't really understand these figures to be fair. Um, I do know that every time I go in, um, he's, he's quite happy with the response um, and I'm not suffering too bad with the side effects at the moment. So he's quite happy just for everything to carry on the way it is. Um, and as am I, I'm quite happy to carry on the way I am at the moment. Um, obviously, I did point out that um, my multiple sclerosis is obviously progressing um, noticeably over the last sort of six months, um, particularly down my right side. Um, I've had foot drop, um, which is basically where I, I struggle to lift me, me right foot um, when I'm walking. So in the past, I've, I've tripped over that and fell a few times. Um, so I've had that for maybe a year, year and a half, something like that. Um, I've still got that, but I've also got now um, weakness down my right side, um, which is getting worse. I'm starting to get weakness down in my left side as well. Um, but there's, there's times as well when, if I've been sitting just for sort of five, 10 minutes and I get up to stand, I physically can't get my legs to to straighten um, so that they become like almost locked for a few seconds until I can sort of then really it feels like you're stretching them out just to get them down and then your legs feel like lead just as you're trying to walk and this sort of it wears off it wears off just after a, a couple of minutes or so but um, yeah that's becoming more and more apparent um, so it's, it's one that I'm going to have to keep an eye on. Obviously, um, grip strength, I've got very little grip strength. I know I showed in one of my other videos, that's me opening and closing my hand. Whereas my other hand, I can do that. This hand does that. So there's a noticeable difference in reaction, if you like, on my right side as well. Um, but, you know what? Let's not dwell on that. Um, I'm still alive, life's still here. We've still got tons to see in our life. We bought the camper van exactly for this reason and that's why we use the camper van as much as we can with the dogs. We get out and about, we try and stay positive and live life to the full. So yeah, fingers crossed, everything's working out fine. We'll see you on the next trip, hopefully, which shouldn't be too long. So till then, catch you in a bit.